Hey there, bestie. I'm Luria Me, your What to Read Next podcast host. Join me as we dive into exciting new reads that'll have you reaching for your TBR pile in no time. From group and mysteries to spicy romances, we'll explore it all and help you find your next favorite book. So grab a cup of tea, cozy it up, and let's discover some amazing reads together. Hi, Gabriela. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Hi, I'm excited to be here. So happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm an author. This is my debut romance, adult romance. Partially inspired from when I was working in a library, at least on Marcella's careers part. And then, you know, the series. So you might see other side characters pop up and have their own uh, story later on. You'll see yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm originally from Corpus and moved to San Antonio. Well, I moved for college and then I moved back home briefly. And then that's when I was working in libraries and then eventually made my way back up here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I love the fact that you got some ideas from that career into your book and, you know, incorporating. So let's start with your book itself like what's the what led you to start writing that first book or like are you did you have the manuscripts or this is just something you pursue creatively or you always want to be a writer and you always been writing what's your what's your writing journey story <laughs> I love this question yeah so I've always wanted to be a writer ever since like middle school I I vividly remember getting my first laptop uh, I believe I was in fifth grade and we didn't really have like a stable internet like we we would have like dial up for a while and then eventually that i don't even remember what happened but eventually we didn't have the internet anymore but we all still had computers and so i didn't the old my only two choices were basically solitaire and microsoft word yeah and that was kind of how my writing process began whenever i get stuck i go into solitaire play some games try to you know unblock something in my mind and then yeah. go back to writing whenever you know I become unblocked with the yeah. writer's block I still do that a lot actually I still have solitaire on my computer and I still do that yeah oh my gosh. I need to play um, then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean it, it's good when you just want to you know just like it, stop thinking for a while it really is and it's a core memory because I, I, I grew up in the 90s so like when we had computers 90s and early early aughts like you know those were the mm-hmm. games that we had on our computer it was solitaire and it was you know the other one that i don't remember the name but the one that a core memory was like just play solitaire and i remember my mom teaching me how to yeah. do it with card like in person like actually like the card version oh. Like, oh my gosh, I've never, I've never done it like physically. Yeah, I've always just I, done it your game. Yeah. So I remember <laughs> like before the computers, my mom used to play solitaire in the cards. Like they taught us like card games. I think it was a hurricane. I'm from Puerto Rico. So we had a, we had a couple of hurricanes where we'd have power. So we had to entertain ourselves without power. And the, the cards were like a big part of it. And so oh, yeah. I remember my mom vividly playing solitaire with the cards. <laughs> and then like having in the computer like you know like this yeah. you know you know it's just a core memory for everyone yes. to know that in time yeah this is a millennial core memory oh yeah oh yeah it's never going away yeah, yeah and that, that's why i'm still very attached to it i guess it's yeah. just built in from very early on so yeah i've always wanted to be a writer and then it was maybe around 2019 when I was getting more into like the online book community and was seeing more authors kind of be transparent about how traditional publishing works and then how you basically break into the industry. Because that was one thing that I never really knew. Like I knew I always wanted to be a writer and that I wanted to be published, but I didn't really want to do self-publishing because that's a lot of work that you put on your own shoulders and just... I. It, I was too afraid of messing something up. Like, I feel like that's something that I could very easily mess up and then never do it again and then just cry in the corner. So, yeah, once I found out how to, you know, you know basically, like, 
how traditional pub publishing works. I started querying agent. The first book that I queried, I ended up selling. No one wanted it. It's fine. I'm over it. And then it was the second book that got me my agent and my book deal. So here I am. Here we go. Here you are. I love this. And so speaking of like, let's do the, let's segue because we started talking about Solitaire as a game. Um, I think kind of make you discover, rediscover gaming again. Um, talk to us about that rediscovery because it's like, it's been four years, even though it feels like yesterday. <laughs> Those were the days. Those were the days. We're like, sorry to start gaming. Like, what are what hobbies? We're, we're I think the pandemic helped us like rediscover creative hobbies or like a way to for sure. you know mm -hmm. photograph for it. Yeah, I was like, we need to you know reclaim the energy of our youth. And yes. we were just carefree, you no know, responsibilities. Yes, or just feed our inner child. Our inner child yeah. is in play, so it is totally acceptable. You know, therapy speed. Exactly, exactly. That's that's the best way to put it. So it was during the pandemic when I basically rediscovered gaming. Whenever I was in middle school, that when that was probably my big like Game Boy days. I had a Game Boy Color and then the DS. And yeah. then I think around the 3DS is probably when I stopped. But when basically when I was younger, I would always play Pokemon. That was my number one game. And they still make Pokemon games. They haven't changed very much from back when I was playing. Yeah. I feel like that's saying a lot because it had been like, what, 10 plus years yeah. since then. So it's kind of interesting how like their formula has basically stayed the same. <laughs> yeah, but I loved it. I mean, that was like a very nostalgic moment for me. But I think what really made me get back into gaming was when Animal Crossing New Horizons came out. Mm -hmm. uh, I had never played those games back when like they were popular because I guess I was just too hooked on Pokemon. But that yeah. was basically like a big like decorating and like rebuilding. Like you can design your island. You can invite cute villagers over to your island and just like basically it has almost no plot to it it's really yeah. just about like designing and like making your island look beautiful and there there were so many like gamers online just like sharing like their island and like how they did like certain things and it was just really cool like i spent so many hours on that game and i mean so many hours just making my island look as pretty as it could possibly be so that was a huge one for 2020, even into 2021. So I'm going to stop you there. So how do um, you play it? We got to we gotta dumb it down to someone who has no idea. And so <laughs> do you need to get the Nintendo Switch? Like what kind of... Yeah, like so it's a Nintendo Switch. I started off with a Nintendo Switch Lite, and I think I used it too much that the joystick got stuck and I couldn't use it anymore. <laughs> so bad. And now I need to upgrade. And so that's when I upgraded. They have the Nintendo Switch Lite. It's basically, it's just the console. It has like, like a decent size screen. But then yeah. when you get just like the regular Nintendo Switch, you can hook it up to your TV. So if you have like problems with your eyes and you just need like a bigger screen or like just kind of like distance yourself from just like hunch down over like a small screen, you know, like that's, that's a good way to play it, it's literally like switch so you can switch to tv you might be able to do it on your computer i don't do that so i'm not entirely sure or you can just do it as like the console and the, the console for the regular switch is like that screen is a lot bigger than the switch light yes. so that is easier on the light, on the eyes too yeah. for that one being a bigger screen so yeah that that's basically yeah. how you look Thank you for indulging me because I was like, okay, well, I would like to play this because I love no plot, no game. I actually, I grew up playing The Sims, Sim Tower, Sim oh, City, okay. Roller Coaster Tycoon, Food Tycoon, <laughs> like the hospital kind, like all these, like oh, yeah. you make your own little world kind of deal. And, like you design it, you, and I always yeah. like, cheat code. I was like, I want to have as much money as possible. I don't want to struggle. So, so I was like, Sims is one that I want to play so bad, but they don't have it on Switch for for whatever reason. It's a it's a, they have one. I found I have I just got an iPad Mini, 
that which is like my favorite new reading toy ever it's like so good and so i found that they have a the app store has the sims the sims free and i started oh, being around with it so the ipad has it but it's a computer game like it's a so i was never my brother was with the console. Like, he had the, the original Nintendo, the Nintendo Super Nintendo, the Game Boys, and stuff like that. I think I had Game Boy when I was growing up, but I only played Tetris, I think. Like, okay. So, that was very, like, but the original one, which, like, barely, you know, like, it's, like, no color. Yes. It's, like, red console, very- and it's, like, you know, like, you just, like, clunky and stuff. But, yeah, I haven't, I haven't played games and i'm like now i'm like oh my inner child needs to play some games i discovered legos actually which is very soothing but very expensive hobby oh yeah oh yeah i mean video games also another very expensive hobby yeah it's like so soothing you know like okay i can listen to an audiobook and then just like do this thing like you know yes the and that's another thing too like i tend to really like the games where you can just do your own thing there's not like a necessarily like a big like plot point that you have to do or like a lot of dialogue so you can listen to an audiobook while you're playing and I tend to do that a lot so when I was playing Animal Crossing that's I was in my zone I would have my audiobooks in I would just do like whatever I wanted I would design it was a perfect time hours would go by the book would finish I'd be like when did that happen yeah yeah, I love this. Oh, and so what other games you're you're now that you're like we you told us Animal Crossing is the one that we can get started and as someone who like no plot and likes to listen to books, this might be the best way to approach it. But then what other games now that you have a Nintendo Switch, what else can we do? Yes. So I was also playing Breath of the Wild. That was a big one that I had missed out on because it came out, I believe, in like 2017 and it was a whole big thing where people were like waiting years and years and years for the sequel to come out and then the sequel finally came out last year so the sequel is tears of the kingdom it's a big open world game it's another one that like you would think that a game like that would have a big plot to it and it kind of does but also just because of how the i guess like the the system is built it's open world so you can basically do your own thing from the beginning when you're still in that kind of like trial era before you like you're like you're like i'm used to this i know what i'm doing they just kind of throw you in on the deep end from the very beginning so it, it's kind of fun though it i will say it's very hard when you don't know what you're doing in the beginning yeah and like I would die constantly and I would get so frustrated. So I will say like it's a little bit of a like intermediate, like, I don't know if that's one that you want to jump right in from the get go, if you're still kind of a beginner. Yeah. But it's like, once you reach a certain point, you get enough heart, you have enough stamina to do, you know, like your thing, it gets a lot easier. But I will say that beginning, just from the beginning jump, it's kind of hard, I will say. (laughs) <laughs> all right so it's good to know like this intermediate and also any other games you want to talk about we want we can talk about sector so don't worry yes yeah, so there there's one more that i think like if you're a beginner like it would be a really fun game to play and also it's kind of a little retro so it's stardew valley it's like the graphics like you can tell like it's very like nostalgic from like older games mm-hmm. when it, it's very like like very simple graphics but as far as like the world and what you can do it is very big I would say for a basic game like that and there's a lot you can do just like within the story and then also just like within your like it's I wouldn't say it's open world because it does have some sort of plot to it but it's not as constricting as I as other game like that or like you have to follow along this, this yes. like basically plot, plot wait and I think if you do like the sims you would like it because my favorite aspect of it is that you can date but yes. you can date the other the other like talents people so and you don't have to choose a gender either you can date men and women whether like you're playing as a man or a woman so like I love that too and it's so you would think that it was just 
just be a basic farming game because you come, you basically, you come to Stardew Valley because your grandfather left you his uh, farm, which is basically run down and it's your job to fix it. But there's also a lot of magical elements involved. There's a mine just like off of town and there are monsters in the cave and you have to go into the cave to get resources and you have to fight monsters, which is really cool. It's like, there's definitely a lot to it. And I would also say like story-wise, it is also a very rich game. Like you, you friend the people of the town, even people you're not dating. And it, it definitely surprised me the depth of some of these characters' storylines. I was like, wow, I was not expecting you to like hurt me that way. Yeah, so, I thought other that's another definitely like that's a new favorite. Like that's my new current say. Thank you so much for indulging me with a like gaming question. Of course. And even doing the love beginner it. level. The the ultra beginner level is like, oh wait, how do I play? Because you know? I know if I have this question, I know some of my listeners may have this question. Elder millennial. Yeah. Like, you know, we're we're at the Oregon Trail, so we may not we may not be in tune with that with the new era of toys. No, yeah, this is definitely like one of my newest like hyper fixations when I'm not reading. Basically I'm playing video games. That's what I'm doing. Love this. Awesome. So okay, so let's talk about the next best fling. What is the elevator pitch? Okay, gosh. So the next best fling we follow Marcella Ortiz. And essentially, she's had a crush on her best friend who she had dated briefly in college. But that's another thing. Like, she had just, like, kind of never got over that. And it's been 10 years. And then he kind of blindsides her with the news that he and his girlfriend are getting engaged. And it, it really shouldn't be blindsiding because they've been together for a while. And Marcella knows this. Uh, but that's essentially her wake up call moment of like, yeah, I need to get over this. Like it, I am long past due overdue uh, of like, you know, getting over my feelings like something needs to stop. Right. But before she can kind of make a plan of how to do that, um, the ex's older brother, Theo, comes into town and at the engagement party, he gets very drunk and basically decides that he is going to confess his feeling. And then luckily, Marcella overhears him and is able to stop him before he can. And she's basically like, okay, if I'm not stopping this wedding, you're not stopping this wedding. You're going to come home with me. You're going to sleep off your drunken state on my couch. And when we wake up tomorrow, everything's going to be fine right? Like you're, you're not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. We're fine. But then they all, they arrive in front the next day as well, the friends and family, and everyone assumes that they hooked up and Mm -hmm. they're just kind of like, okay, like we're just, we're, we're going to roll with the lie. We can't tell anyone the truth because then they're going to know about you. And then they might even know about me. Like we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to roll with the lie. We're going to just let everyone believe that we're going to hope that, that we hooked up and then they start actually hooking up. So. And more will be real. And they're probably going to get feelings and it's probably going to end a heavily or after. But the journey is what takes us to the next level. Mm-hmm. All yeah. about the journey. So you got God bless the brother, the forbidden brother, the older brother who you're not supposed to like, but they're like, it's the one they're actually you're meant to have. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a wrong member. <laughs> so what was your favorite part about writing this book oh my gosh i have so many favorite parts i think because it, it was something so different from what i've ever done it was just i think kind of building that chemistry between them i think i had surprised myself even and that was also re- that was just really fun a really fun aspect of it and then also i think just any kind of like love confession, grand gesture, I'm a sucker for. And I think those were probably mm-hmm. also like my favorite parts of writing this book, I would say. Yeah, I love this. All right, so let's chat some book recommendations. Do you, have, do you have any books to recommend our listeners to pick up? Oh my gosh, I have so many recommendations. I have a whole, my whole rainbow. I know. I see. 
You have a rainbow shop. I was like, I'm loving your physical book collection. You have the best background. What's up? Thank you. Like, you, you. I may, I may screenshot it and put it in like, <laughs> and then her notes, like her background. Is so oh yeah, it's for inspiration, right? As far as like favorite, favorite that are just like near and dear to my heart. I would say Helen Huang is one of those romance authors who is just up there, basically changed the the entire, like everything that I thought romance was or romance was capable of being. Helen Huang was basically like on another level. And I think I just appreciate her books so much for that. The Bride Test was my very first Helen Wong book, and it still remains my favorite of hers. So I would say to anyone who hasn't checked her out yet, definitely do so with haste. Um, another one, I would say kind of a recent favorite, but oh, 2022 wasn't actually that recent, but like that's when I read it anyway. The Chance of a Lifetime series by Kate Claiborne. So Beginner's Luck was the first one. Luck of the Draw is the second one. My favorite. Uh, if you're going to read any book in the series, start with that one. I started with that one. And then I went back and read the other two. And then the third one, Best of Luck. Yeah, I read the Beginner's Luck. And I, I God bless, I love a lottery winning. Like, I, oh, yeah. I aspire to win the lottery. I aspire to be a lady of leisure. Oh, I would, that just I would love it. <laughs> and get independently wealthy like i was telling my friend sarah about this i was like you know there's all these the meme about finance six oh, five you know, <laughs> and stuff like that and i was like i and then i saw the meme it was like 94 for financial health no family and you know and i was like yes i would like to be a widow <laughs> like if with historical, historical romances i would like to be a widow oh, like gosh, you know yeah. you're like no, I don't have to have any platonic relationship. I don't want to. I'm not trying to have any anything sexual, but I will like a platonic relationship. And then it's like every you inherit the wealth, and you're like, oh you yeah, just, set for life. <laughs> like that's the work. Like, like independent. So I aspire for that. Like that's like you know, in another world, another dream. I would like to just be independently wealthy and just read and just enjoy playing games and like and doing homemaker stuff. Yeah. oh yeah um, and i mean you know we can say all all we want you know like money like doesn't matter or whatever try to like lessen the the value but i mean like it brings a lot of does. value to your life and i feel like that's the most interesting thing about this series is that we follow the three friends who like they basically split the lottery winning and it essentially their yeah. books are about you know what they want for their lives and what the money kind of helps them do but then also uncovering like what they secretly want but haven't told anyone and then now that they yeah. have that opportunity to get what they want just kind of like uncover some like things that they didn't even realize about themselves which it was so interesting and i love it i loved that series but it was so it was such an interesting take on like that lottery win kind of trope yeah i love it i love kate's writing it's just so like it's I know it verges on women's fiction and I know there's a lot of conversation about women to women's fiction for romance, but there's something to be said about like having the exploration of like feelings, thoughts, emotions, ideas, pursue different thing, different life path, and that journey that takes takes care of it. It lets you kind of like, yes, the romance is important, but there's also so much more to life mm -hmm. than just the the person that you're gonna find um and so exploring that idea holistically i love kate that does such a great job with it i agree um, and then there's just something like so tender too about the romances that she does write and specifically in that series too they're where they, her characters kind of like make me ache a little like oh my god yeah. like they feel so real yeah and the kiss portion was my first audiobook so we have like first you know like <laughs> the, i like Bullshit. I was surprised. I was not expecting it so spicy. And I was like <laughs> listening to it while doing my job as a temp. And I was like, temp being there found. And I was like, oh, no. Scandalous. You're going to I was like, I don't think I'm scary. 
cute. I don't have better humor than Kiwiko next door to me. I still have this job and I now work from home so I can listen to it on my speaker. Yeah, you, like, this is my your audio. Yeah. yeah. But. But yeah, I was like, I remember being, I was like, oh, there's the spicy scenes are included. <laughs> I'm surprised. I was like, oh, look. Like, whoa, heating up my work, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it, it keeps the work day a little bit better. So, uh, but yeah. So, Gabriella, tell us we can find that line. Yeah. So, you can find me on my website, GabriellaGomez.com. Instagram is probably my most used social media so if you have any like quick questions dms are open i'm always checking you know to see and i'm on tiktok some of the time mostly just like fun little goofy videos whenever i can think of them and just you know that's kind of like something fun that i that i do sometimes so i'm on there as well and on on both i'm at gabby writes a lot i love this Thank you, Gabriela, for being on the show. Of course. Happy to be here. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the Watch Read Next podcast. If you enjoy our bookish conversations and want more recommendations, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Also, head on over to the Watch Read Next blog for a list of books mentioned in today's show. Happy reading.